There are so many people out there that have Alzheimer's disease, and unfortunately, the focus tends to be on finding a cure or finding a medication to slow the progression of the disease. But in that comes this horrific perspective that when people have Alzheimer's disease, they're a sufferer from Alzheimer's. You often hear that in the media. President Reagan died after years of suffering from Alzheimer's. And, you know, so that perception exists that when you have Alzheimer's disease, you will automatically suffer. And a lot of the energy out there is around finding a cure or finding a medication to slow the progression. And while I think both of those things are very important, I ask myself, what are we doing now? to help the millions of people who have Alzheimer's disease or related dementia, what are we doing now to help that person not suffer, but to live a life of quality, to coexist with the disease? Yes, they have it. We can't heal the brain, but we can heal their soul. At every stage of dementia, somebody still has remaining abilities. Do we see those abilities? Do we walk into a room and expect that this person is going to have the opportunity to communicate and have a loving relationship even when they have Alzheimer's? Or do we walk into the room and see them and expect that they're going to have confused, confused speech or they're going to lose their attention span and not be able to engage in a conversation and not be able to enjoy an activity? So what inspired me was that I learned that most people think about folks who have Alzheimer's as basically having everything taken away from them. They live in a world of loss and despair. And unless we can find a cure or unless we can give a drug, they're going to suffer. But I knew that wasn't true. As a therapist for many years, I knew that leading with the belief that this person was still whole and could still interact and communicate and love and be loved often led to that result. And that just drove me. You know, I, um, I remember one day sitting with somebody uh, at a community. She had Alzheimer's and she was sitting alone on a bench. And I came up and I said, can I sit with you for a while? And the first thing that she said to me is, no, no. And she pushed me away. And somebody came up and said, I told you, I told you. That she doesn't want it. She just wants to be left alone. She's fine. Just leave her alone. And I said, no, I want to get to know her. In five minutes, we were sitting on the swing, holding hands. She was telling me stories, although confused, but telling me stories about her past. But she kept squeezing my hand tighter and tighter and tighter. That was a meaningful experience. That was a meaningful experience for her. It was a meaningful experience for me. You know that that caregiver at that facility looked at that, and I thought, you know what? She's going to get it. She's going to say, wow, I didn't know that potential for her to interact was still there. But that caregiver said to me, I told you she was confused. So being able to help people reframe their thinking about people from Alzheimer's, people with Alzheimer's, being able to reframe the way they think about people with Alzheimer's became important to me. It's not you have purpose in this society if you are normal, if you can do the things the way you used to do them. You can communicate the way you used to communicate. It's not that. It's you still have purpose in this society. You still bring me joy. You still can receive joy as long as you can still interact and engage. That may change, but it's still important. So that became my, my mission, is helping people with Alzheimer's to flourish at every stage of the disease.